Hello, my name is David Herbert. I'm principal timpanist of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. This orchestral excerpt is the opening passage from Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's Symphony No. 39 in E-flat major. When musicians perform Mozart, it's important to focus on the beauty and the elegance of the sound. For instance, in Mozart, there's only two dynamics, forte and piano. And it's really important not to think of forte as being loud and piano as being soft. That doesn't exist in the compositional language world of Mozart. Instead, when we see forte, we need to think about the more expressive, exuberant, generosity, sound and realm of beauty. And then when we see piano, we need to think about a more intimate expression of the beauty. It is my responsibility as a timpanist to capture the spirit and elegance of Mozart with only two notes. My goal is to make the instrument sound less like drums and more like bells. So in this situation, I'm using sticks that are a little bit small, a little bit um, articulate so I can get the rhythms out, but soft enough so that I can also play this long passage of, of tremolo. My advice for choosing sticks, especially with Mozart and Beethoven and Haydn, is to choose sticks that are more on the articulate side of the spectrum so that you provide lots of buoyancy to the sound. Rhythmic information is critical in early classical music. There's one section of this passage that's very interesting. It's right after the long, smooth tremolo, and we have this rhythm that's dun, 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 dun. And then the harmony changes on the second bar. As a timpanist, even though I can't technically change the harmony, I can complement the harmonic change of the orchestra by moving the, what we call the playing spot or beating spot in or out just a little bit further. So closer to the rim, it's gonna sound a little bit uh, thinner sound. And then if I move in just a little bit at that harmony change, I can create a color change on the instrument itself. So the sound gets deeper, it gets a little bit more, more intense, and I create the illusion of complementing the harmony change right at that bar line. The body works together with the imagination. So what a famous teacher once told me, he said, David, if you can't imagine the sound, you'll never be able to play the sound. So now I'm always imagining the sound before I play. That's the best advice I can give. Technically, there's not much going on except it's extreme relaxation in the hands and arms and my back muscles. And all I'm thinking about is making the most beautiful sound as possible without overplaying the instruments. That 
definitely doesn't sound like Mozart to me. <laughs> when we play Mozart, it's very important to remember not to overthink too much. Focus on the beauty, focus on the simplicity, and understand that simplicity is the best form of sophistication.